Hi all, welcome to part four of this OSPF configuration. I'm going to walk through the, the final steps now, guys, with you all with regards to changing the cost of the link. So we left off in the last exercise where we saw the traffic flowing from, for example, PC1 to PC2 or from Dublin to Galway sites. And we saw that the, the route it takes is the shortest, the best cost or the shortest cost to get there. So we have to kind of look back and say, well, routing protocols choose the best route to reach a subnet by choosing the route with the lowest metric. So you might say, well, what is that metric for basically OSPF? And OSPF totals the cost associated with each interface in the end-to-end -end route with a cost based on link bandwidth. So up to this point, I've kind of said, hey, the, 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 the cost of this link, for example, is 64. But where did I get that from? Well, this is actually a calculation that the router does based on a formula, okay? And if we go in here, and let's, let's just take router one, for example. And if, for example, let's go back to privilege mode. If I type in the command show um, interfaces serial, and let's say zero slash zero slash zero, I wanna show you just a couple of different stats that'll actually show us on the router. So basically we can see here that the bandwidth of this link is 1544 kilobits per second. That's also 1.544 megabits per second, okay? So in order to actually work out how it gets this value of 64, there is another command that we can, we can, we can see. Um, if I go to show IP OSPF interface and serial zero slash zero slash zero, this command here, guys, we can see it gets this value of 64, this cost of 64. So where is that coming from? Well, here, what I might do, guys, is I might just bring out my calculator just to show you this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my calculator over here. You might say, well, where is it getting this value from? So again, just to remind ourselves, if I just hit, go back and show interface serial 000, that's the kilobits per second, okay? Well, if we convert that to megabits per second, Okay, what we can do is to get this cost metric, we basically, the, the formula here is 100 divided by the bandwidth in megabits per second. So what I can say is, I can say 100 divided by 1.544 megabits per second. And that will give us a value, guys, of 64.76, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what OSPF will do is it will truncate everything after the decimal place. So it'll literally just keep the 64. And that's where the value is coming from here. So when I go into show IP OSPF interface 000, we can see that the cost of 64 is there. Also, folks, just, just, at a, just to, 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 to continue even further, what if I was to go in here and again look at fast Ethernet 00? So if I was to look at so that was the serial interface we were looking at. What if I was to go show IP OSPF interface serial, oh sorry, fast internet zero slash zero. And if we do this, we can see that the cost of this fast ethernet is one. Where is it getting the value there? Well, again, if we hit the up arrow and hit the up arrow again, and if we go show interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, okay, what we'll be able to see is that this value bandwidth in kilobits per second is 100,000. In megabits per second, it's gonna be 100 megabits per second. So I can put that into my formula again, can't I? So again, my formula was 100 divided by, in, in this case, the bandwidth in, mega, in megabits per second. So in this case, it's gonna be 100 megabits per second. What's the answer? It's gonna be a cost of one. So this is how it's calculating. So for example, we're sending with, with regards, and let's just refocus back on what OSPF does when we go through these various different states. Remember, just to do a quick recap, what happened was when we turned on OSPF on each of the routers, each of these routers became neighbors. What did they do then? They exchanged what's called LSAs or link state advertisements. In those link state advertisements, it gave the value of these different 
network. So, for example, Dublin told Galway about it knew about the 172.16.1.16 slash 28 network. And it had, it was connected to the fast Ethernet port and it had a cost of, um, for for this, it would basically, you know, would, would have been a fast Ethernet, it had a cost of one. Also, it would have told information about the, this network, for example, in, the, in its LSA, and it would have also told it about this network. So, or two would have learned all of the pieces of the puzzle, if you like, with regards to this network. The next question then is, what does the router do with this? So again, if we think of it from router 2's perspective, it's been given all this information from R1, but what does it actually put in its routing table? Well, this is where the shortest path first algorithm comes into play. And this is how, this is Dijkstra's algorithm, if you're familiar with the mathematics behind this. This is whereby it, it sees the map of the network with regards to all of the costs. So it says, oh, I see there's a cost of 64 here, a cost of 64 here, cost of 64 here, one, one. And it says, if I'm going from router two down to router one, I know it's a cost going this way of 64, and a cost of one going, going here, which gives me a total of 65. I could also go from R2 to R3 and over to R1, which is a cost of 64 plus 64 plus 1, which is 129. And of course, that isn't the best route. Why? It's got a higher cost so that the, 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 the route that goes into the routing table will point directly over to R1 when R1, when R2 needs to communicate with Dublin. So what if you wanted to change this behavior? Well, if you wanted to change the behavior, we have to change these costs. So for example, in here, we might need to go, let's escape out of here, and uh, let's hit the up arrow. We might want to go, for example, in here, and we might want to say, well, this is a cost of one. There's no point in really making that. It's not gonna go any lower than one, okay? So what we need to do is we might need to say, well, what links could we adjust? So the links that we could adjust definitely are our serial interfaces. So if I said serial zero slash zero slash zero, and I know this is a cost of 64 at the moment, but what if I was to change that to a value a lot lower? So what I can do is, if for example, I knew that to get to this from Dublin over to basically Galway, I know that it's gonna go through this link here, and it's gonna go up through this link to get to PC2. So that's a cost of 65. And again, if I, to prove that, I can go show IP root, and that will tell us in order to get to the 10 network, the 10 network, here we are. Okay, so let's make, let's see all of the networks here. So I can see here the OSPF learned network. It's going out to, to get to the destination subnet of 10.10.10.0. It has an administrative distance, which is the default for OSPF 110, and the cost is 65. It's going through the next top of 192 state 10.2. Who's 192 state 10.2? I can see it's very, very small there, but it's saying this serial interface 000. So that's telling me it's going through that. And I'm leaving my serial 000 interface to get to that network. So what if we were to say, I want you to actually go this way, this way, and this way to get to that destination network. What we'd need to do then, guys, is there's two options here for us. We could either make this link very, very high, as in make it above 129, because I know that the cost to get from, from here up to here is 129 this way. Or what I could do is I could adjust the cost of this link and the cost of this link and that to make it lower than 65. So let's do that just for repetition. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, guys, is I'm gonna go into Comp T, I'm gonna go under serial zero slash zero slash one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a basically a command to change the cost of the link. Okay, so how will I do this? Well, I need to use a different basically command to change the link. So what I can do is I can go IP OSPF cost and I can make it a cost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a cost of 10. Okay, now again, you can see OSPF, the link state advertisement is going to go, hey, there's been a change here. I need to inform my neighbors. Okay, so if I press play out here, it's going to tell those other routers about that cost change. Now, again, what I can do to check that, okay, because I've just made a change there, I can go exit, exit, and let's run that command again. Show IP OSPF interface 
serial zero slash zero slash one. And what this should show me now, guys, is the cost has been changed from 64 now to a value of 10. What I'm also going to need to do now, guys, is I'm going to need to, because nothing's happened, it's still going to route the traffic over to, if you like, from PC1 to, to PC2. Why? Because now the cost of this link is going to be 10 plus 64, which is 74, 75, which is still greater than this. 65 in total. So what I now need to do is I need to go over to my friend router 3 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust its cost. So I'm going to go into interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 and what I'm going to say is I'm going to say IP OSPF cost and let's make this again, let's make this for example 5 and again I'm just picking random values here but the whole idea here is to create a, a least cost path better than going from R1 to R2 directly. So once I've done that, I can go in, go ex escape. Again, you can see those link state advertisements that the router really wants to send here in the background to its other friends. So if I press play, look at them being spread around. And this is this whole idea of the flooding process for LSA, telling its neighbors about any changes that happen with regards to links, their states. And this is where the, the link state um, naming convention came from. So once I've done that, guys, I can now, again, I can double check that, that that has indeed applied. So I can go show IP OSPF interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. And now I can see the cost of 5 for this serial link. So now, guys, by my calculations, we've created now a cost of 10 going across this link. And we've got a cost of now five going across this link so what we should now have guys is when by the time these lsas are finished we've got now a total cost from r1 up to galway from the dublin side it's going to be a cost of 10 cost of five here which is 15 and a cost of one here which is 16. so that is now better than a cost of 65 going from if you like r1 up to r2 which is cost 64 plus one so again, this is a cost of the better route now is a cost of 10 plus 5 plus 1 is 16. So if I go back to, if I keep pressing play, these LSAs are going to tell each other about them. They're going to tell each router. So this is the flooding process. Eventually that's going to stop. And now this router will basically have a better cost path to get to this 10.10.0 network. So what we can actually do now, guys, is we can go back in here. Okay. We can go show IP route. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look to see is the, is the subnet adjusted yet. By the looks of things, guys, it doesn't seem to be because I can see here, see here is 0, which is, or sorry, O, which is the OSPF route. It's still pointing back up to its neighbor of 10.2. So what I might need to do, guys, is I might need to just keep pressing forward for a moment just to make sure that all of these OSPF updates go across. And what I might do is I might just go back to real-time mode to just give that a couple of seconds to allow those LSAs to progress around my network. Fast forward sometimes. Now, again, this should be very, very quick on a, on a production network. Let's go back to our routing table again. Now I'm hoping that it will change our route because I've given it a bit of time to let it update for that shortest path first, our Dijkstra's album to run. So once I do that, and you'll see guys, yes indeed, we have had success. We can see now our to get to the network 10.10.10.0, it's now going through our friend, which is R3, which is the Cork router. We're pointing to 10 sorry this 192 will say 10.6 address which is obviously this interface here and i can also see it's leaving to get to that network it's leaving serial 001 so how cool is that guys so in a, in effect what we're doing is we've changed the path of traffic flow there and again if we wanted to prove this for ourselves we could see that going across from here pc1 to pc2 it's going to go across and it's going to take the longer path, but remember, even though it's the longer path, it may be a better metric or a better cost because it's now taking into account the bandwidth. Okay, now we've changed directly the cost, but we'll see that now it gets routed across the 
from router one to router three and up to router two. Now, sometimes people say to me, oh, and the traffic coming back is gonna go through the exact same path as in it's gonna go back through R2 to R3 and R1. And the answer to that question is no, it's not. Remember, R2 is doing a different calculation. It's gonna work out what's its best path to get back to PC1. And remember, from R2's perspective, its best path is outbound of serial 000, which has a cost of 64, and basically outbound here, which has a cost of one, which is 65. Outbound here, serial 001, still has, guys, so in a, in a way, from R2's position, remember these cost values are from R1's position, but really from R2's position, serial 001 still has a cost of 64. So it's gonna choose this path, the, the, the best path down. And R3, by the way, it has a cost of serial 000. Going this way has a cost of 64. So again, what we'll see is R2 will choose R1 to send the traffic back. If I wanted to send the traffic back through R3, I would have to amend the serial interface 001 and R2 to a lower value, and likewise, I would have to do the same on R3 on serial 000. Okay, guys, so just to wrap up, I hope that's been informative for you. Just to wrap up there, we've, we've talked through OSPF, we talked about the the router ID process, how the, the OSPF routers get a name for itself that it will use to communicate in this um, area, single area network. We've talked about the whole idea of routers becoming neighbors and sharing the link state advertisements with one another once they become neighbors. We talked about the shortest path first algorithm, which Dijkstra uses to work out the best cost across the network. And finally, once it's got those answers to the best cost, it then populates them into the IP routing table, which then affect the flow of traffic. I hope this has been valuable to you guys, and um, I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.